Okay, everybody here now? Um, so uh, today we're gonna share like a pretty like casual walkthrough and discussion of uh, WordPress 6.1 uh, and how the release is coming along. Um, so just a few uh, housekeeping items uh, to start us off. Um, this call is being recorded uh, and we'll have a uh, make work press uh, core blog post uh, in a few days. Uh, it should, the call should also be on uh, WordPress TV and uh, our, I believe our WordPress YouTube channel too. Um, so just give us a few days to get those links uh, up and shared. Uh, we also have uh, live captioning, I believe, and a uh, text transcription enabled. Um, so for the folks uh, attendees following, um, you can use the Q&A uh, question and answer option in your uh, Zoom menu bar. Um, you can also post over in the walkthrough channel on WordPress Slack if you have questions. Um, and we'll have a Q&A session toward the end of the uh, toward the end of this call to uh, kind of cover everybody's questions. Um, so, hey, I'm Justin Tadlock. I'm a developer advocate. Uh, I focus on like uh, our WordPress communities, uh, developers and extenders. Um, and we have uh, several people from the uh, WordPress 6.1 release team. And I just wanna do a quick uh, thank you for everybody joining us. Uh, for our core tech co-lead, uh, Dave Baumwald and Jeff Paul, um, editor uh, triage, uh, Nick Diego, um, on the design team, Rich Tabor, uh, themes, uh, Sarah Norris, um, release coordinator and uh, our note taker today, Jonathan uh, Desrosiers, if I got your name right, I hope I did. Um, and our lead project architect is Matthias Ventura. Um, so in a moment, I'll give the mic over to Matthias and we'll, he'll discuss like the main goals and features of 6.1. Uh, then we'll have our panelists introduce ourselves, their selves and share a comment or two about the role and the release and like interesting things they're working on. Um, and then, uh, after that section, we'll do the, uh, Q and A, uh, but so Matthias, you ready to kick things off? Sure, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'll let me get things started. I'll jump straight into it. Last time we run a bit out of time, so I, I hope I don't uh, derail too much into, into conversations. Um, so the first thing is to do a quick recap of what was the plan for 6.1. We had um, planned work on the main template editor on patterns, global styles, block design tools. And there was this um, sort of appendix about uh, gradual adoption of these tools. And that ended up being the theme for uh, at least the Gutenberg side of the work for 6.1. Uh, there's been a lot of refinement, consolidation, and expansion of the features. And so if we jump into it, we're again packing about 11 releases um, that right now that amounts to around 360 updates and 370 bug fixes uh, on the plugin. Um, we'll probably have a bit more uh, once the, the latest uh, releases come out and during the, the beta period. Um, so I'll jump straight into the, the one that's most exciting probably, uh, which is the new default theme. Um, 2023 and 2023 is going to look um, kind of like a, just this white thing by default, but the, the beauty of it is going to be uh, in the style variations that it packages. Um, that was a pretty fun, like the first time that we did this sort of call to the community to submit uh, styles for, for a default theme. Uh, so it's really pushing what the features that we introduced. I guess theme JSON was 5.9 or maybe 5.8 even. I don't remember, but it's been a, it's been a couple of releases. Um, this theme really pushes that to, to its almost. So let's just, um, right now we have these, um, I guess it was 
10, but it's, I'm seeing a nine, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so this style variation just drastically changed everything in the theme. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, you might see that we have a bug here in trunk, which is uh, these, the, the query loop is supposed to be full width, but um, I'm running trunk where we added a latest feature, which is this thing where you can just align. And we don't have like, um, something is wrong there that is not making it full width. So it, I guess it's supposed to be something like, is that correct, Sarah? I think it's it should be something like this. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So any, anyways, we'll, we'll just play with it there. Um, going to jump, this is not probably not making it into 6.1, but this is a, you can toggle this in the plugins and experimental mode, but it's really nice to see the, it's fun to, to do with the style variations because you see more of the, the whole thing at once. So the idea here is just to like, again, showcase uh, a lot of variety in all the styles, buttons and so on. Um, this one is quite nice. It works with like smaller size titles, but it's, uh, and this is the default. Quite like this one, which is like just defaulting. It's like lowercase typography, uh, all the same size. That's quite interesting. It's nice that there's actually like an animation between the, the transitions between the styles. And of course, the, the cool thing about style variations not being just CSS is that the user would always be able to pick the one they want, but actually get to modify exactly all the details if they want to. Um, so that's pretty neat. Let's actually switch this to, because it's bothering me. Yeah, so this layout is not that bad. So this is, uh, I guess there's still some work being done on the templates and whatnot. I was seeing the, see the front end here. Yeah, I don't know if we want to, for example, like if the default template is going to crop the feature images so it's all aligned because otherwise we have this sort of staircase thing. Um, there are some details there on the on the theme that I guess will be uh, polished, but it's, it's it's pretty cool to just see the the amount of change that we can get just with the with the style variations. Um, any 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 reactions so far to this? I was I'll start jumping into the next pieces because we have a lot to cover. So one, the next stuff that is uh, important to highlight, we had the template editor introduced before. This time there's a ton of new templates being added. Um, this was possible to do from, a, if you just open the theme folder and modify the code, but now it's exposed to users in a match. You can create custom templates directly. You can create uh, a template for a specific post type. Uh, you can pick the post you want to create a template for. This is really, I'm really excited about this because it really opens up a lot of the power of WordPress to any user now. If you want to say, I don't know, you have a special category of travel and you want to create a, a template for that category, you can do it. Um, and there's another improvement here. Let's see if, this, if we create one. Yeah, so before when you were creating a template, it will start completely blank. Now it, it loads the most relevant template for this. In this case, it was the, the archive. So it's using, you, you're you modifying the tag template, but it's using the archive type as its basis. Uh, so you don't need to start from scratch. Um, obviously here in the future, we'll probably have uh, different starting points, um, like the same way that we have patterns when you create a new page and so on. Um, you know, remove these. I think you, Justin, did a, like a cool post sort of reviewing all the new templates. There's quite a bit to, to dig through there. So if people want to check that out, because we have page specific templates, custom post types, um, taxonomy based templates and so on. 
Um, the other really cool thing, um, there's a, I, in this release, we're going to have a lot of developer focused tools as well. Um, so to sort of leverage a lot of this stuff, um, jumping quickly into that, for example, the in 6.0, we introduced the, the starter pattern. So if you register a block pattern with the, and you're restricted to this block type, so it only shows on post content, when you were creating a new post, um, you would get to choose a, uh, or a new page, you would get to choose a starter pattern. Now that's open up to any post type. So you can, if you have a custom post type, you can restrict a pattern to a specific custom post type and also the post content. So that would allow you to, I don't know, imagine you have a, a book or something. And when you create a new book, you will see like, these are the patterns for books and only for that uh, custom post type. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty cool flow for people to, to hook into. So the other the other one like we have improved the the locking tools a lot and I'll quickly show some of that. Um, this is like the next step of locking and and what it does is here I have a full block that's like a full pattern, but it feels like I cannot really do anything to mess up the design. Like if you see the block tools, I don't have movers. I cannot remove. I cannot really do anything with this. I can only just we can replace the content from my media library and so on. And but I cannot do like again anything to the um let's find one that's taller. I cannot really get rid of stuff. I can modify the text, of course, but I cannot do even even here is only again I have access to alignment, uh, bold and so on, but nothing else. And the cool thing is that if you open the the inserter, it's like it feels like it's like its own set of things. So you can jump between the elements of this pattern quickly. And the only access you have again is to these things that get exposed. Um, so this is you can imagine this as a really nice way to create custom blocks in a sense. Like especially if you like this is now open up for the pattern directory. So you can create a pattern where Again, everything is locked down and, and you get this sort of experience. So you don't need to dive into code at any point to create these kind of uh, patterns. Um, I have a few others, let me see. Yeah, so this pattern is from like the, um, the directory. And again, you get access to like, again, some of these tools, but nothing, nothing else. Um, I think this one is pretty, to me, it's pretty exciting what we what we can do with this. I think in the in the future we want to expose like a few other style properties here. Said you want to allow um, I don't know some colors for the restrict the amount of colors, but still allow them for some of these. That that should also be uh, should also be possible. And let's see if I. And right now it's not exposed in this set of tools, um, but it will be here for like admin users and so on. I'll skip this one. This is a, a, a briefly show there, but it's, it, it essentially allows you. Yeah, so this before, like if you were locking many blocks at once, it was a bit painful because you had to go like one by one. Now you have access to this. Uh, that you can apply the locking properties to all the blocks inside, so you can quickly create this stuff. Um, oh yes, this is we we are bundling now a few header and footer patterns. These patterns are specific to. Uh, let's go back to the slide. So these patterns are specific to template parts. So here I have my header and. If I go to replace header, I can see these are all bundled patterns. So I can quickly swap out, say like, oh, I actually prefer this header and you just, uh, these are right now bundled in core. The idea is that this will be just surfacing the um, pattern directory, um, but they affect only the, the semantic template parts, right? So in case the header and the footer also has, yeah. So you have like some specific footers and these are using like, relevant blocks uh, like the site logo, site title, your navigation and so on. 
uh, so it's really nice. Uh, filters, uh, we already went through this. Cool. So the other area where there, there's been a lot of work is in design tools. And I really like the, actually, let's see if we switch to the one that had the gigantic font. This one, yes. Well, the other thing is like, again, I replaced the, the header thing and and it still like, still works with a, like style variation. So you can start to imagine all the combinations that, that you can do. Uh, what were I, I wanted to check here? Oh, yes. Uh, so if we go to, yeah, mobile or tablet, like the, we have the, some of the, the fluid typography work in there. Um, yeah. And fluid typography is enable, yeah, the, the theme has to opt in into it. Uh, but the cool thing is that the theme doesn't need to define, it can define its own uh, boundaries like max and minimum size, but it works for user values as well, uh, which is really nice. Uh, spacing presets, this is uh, improvements to existing tools. So let's see if we have the, uh, let's check margin, yeah. So here, like now the spacing tools like go in increments, like a theme can define the sort of the presets that it's using. So you can achieve, like you cannot like do random arbitrary values. You can stay within the, the boundaries. Um, and if it's open up, you can always like go into like custom values, but uh, a theme can control this, uh, which is cool. Um, spacing presets. I'll keep going fast because the, but please anyone, if if I went too fast on something and someone who has a question or a, a something to point out, let me know. Uh, we have added border tools to a couple of blocks. So images, um, well, and here you see like you can achieve these effects, but there's also, uh, let's see. Uh, so images can have borders and, if we do it to the, this is interesting. Okay, there it is. There's some weird bug there on selection because I'm adding it to the future image. So it should be adding it to all of them. Um, but it's only showing on selection for some reason. It's fun. And columns as well got access to, to border properties. Um, there's also some work on, on elements. Elements is like a new API that defines things that are relevant across blocks. Uh, so some obvious ones are like captions where you can have them on images, on videos, on galleries, and so on. Um, buttons as well. So these are right now, captions are not exposed to users just yet, but you can control them through theme JSON, so you can uh, ensure that image image captions, um, anything else, they, they all look like, like you want to, and it will be unlocked in novel styles in the same way that we have uh, links, text, headings. You will see one for, for captions here. And I am, a lot of effort went into consistency in, in this release, and that meant uh, we used to have many blocks that were exposed in some, but not all the tools in typography, colors, and so on. So there was, there's been a lot of work in, um, and and I really mean like a lot of work because there's, yeah, there's a lot of pull requests merge, uh, just consolidating these design tools in blocks so that you get the, a consistent and, and more familiar experience. Um, Oh, and hover states were also added for both links and what else did we add them? I think it's not here, but it might be on a button. Do we have it on buttons? Well, I don't know where we have it. Maybe I'm not running the... Mm 
Interesting. Okay, yeah. So there, there's support for hover states and focus states and in buttons and links, but I cannot access it now. So that's more or less design tools. There's one more that's important. Um, and this is more uh, relevant for, for classic themes. Uh, there's a new add theme support that people can opt into. Uh, that is add theme support for appearance tools. And that would allow you, if you're not using a theme JSON file on a classic theme, to still expose a lot of these design tools to blocks if you want to. Um, that's part of the, the gradual adoption milestone. And another one that, that people were really uh, asking for was consolidating the classes output on blocks. So um, again, container classes, layout classes that show, now show up on the front end. Um, that, that was also a big uh, part, of the, part of the effort in 6.1. Uh, where was I? Okay, blocks. What time? Okay, we're fine. Matthias, so the, yeah. Before you stray too far, I can point you to where the hover states are. I think it's a really cool feature. So if you go back to the site editor, where was I? Here. Yeah. And then you go to the global styles, and then under colors. There you go. And then if you click on buttons and link. Okay. Do... Okay. Yeah. 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 I was I was expecting that we were also exposing it on <laughs> yeah. uh, on the block instances. Um, right. So we're not a fully integrated to... through everything, but yeah, it is yeah. it is in there. Yeah, we we need to and on group blocks, I was also trying to find it. And, right. But yeah, it's like uh one step at a time. Yeah. So here and you can see here, like again, I don't have a hover, but I'll put a hover and then you'll see that you get the two color circles as well. Um, and the same for buttons. I guess here in buttons, we could actually probably fix this. Uh, in buttons, it's not showing. Yeah. Text color background. Yeah, I guess buttons still. Buttons has it, but I guess only on the theme JSON is not exposed on the UI just yet. Um, but yeah, it's a, a, that, that's one, one example of like the consolidation stuff that is, there's a lot of volume to, to consolidate. Thanks for yeah. chiming in. So for blocks, well, let's talk like quickly about the, one of the big ones, which is that quotes and lists now support nested blocks. Um, which is pretty cool, like the, especially on quotes, that was a big limitation that you couldn't have images or lists inside quotes. So sometimes even when you were transforming classic content, it would fail because the, you might have nested content that wasn't supported. Um, and for lists, it's the same thing. Um, the other thing that it allows is now you can just, again, reorder list items um, because each item is, uh, uh, again, a block so you get access to all of them. There are some still some refinements that need to happen on the uh, writing experience like with a keyword like because sometimes it focuses on the on the block wrapper that we need to address. Um, but it's like these were some of the long-standing pending improvements is 5.0 even um, to have all these supports on on quotes and, and lists. The other thing that improved a lot, and some of that was visible here. Let me see. Yeah, so if we add a, let's add an image. And yeah, so if you have like the image placeholders have all been updated and they have the, so before, if we had this thing just with the outline, in some cases, it would be hard to visualize it. So now if you have it inside a cover, there's this blur out effect. So you can go here and select the, the image. So placeholders in general have been um, addressed and improved quite a bit. The navigation block is, uh, let's remove this one and add a new one. Um, 
where am I? Close this. Okay. We may have stuff. I think I messed up the column. Let's have a navigation here. Yeah, so now the navigation in most cases is just going to work. It's going to pull from the most relevant navigation that you have. Um, before, when you inserted an empty navigation, you would um, have this weird placeholder thing. Um, this is a, there's been a lot of work on that. And there's still some pending work on the navigation log, which is uh, again you can. It's we have some more stuff exposed here. Um, yeah, so the you can select the menu from here and so on. Uh, but it's the 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 placeholder was a pretty big, um, a pretty big issue before uh, that it was showing in in that weird state. So. That's pretty cool. Let's move on. This feature image on blocks is uh, just quickly. Um, again, there's some cases. Let's restore the header I had. Yeah, so if I'm using this one. Yeah, so now you can use the feature image on like the like we have it on cover and stuff, but you can also use it on, I guess if it was just insert after cover. Yeah, you can select to, to use the feature image by default there. So that would be set up already for you. Uh, prioritize transform. This is uh, super recent. It's not even on one of the releases just yet. Let me see. So let's add some text. So the prioritized transform is that now headings, lists, and quotes, and paragraph are all going to be at the top all the time. Um, this started to get a bit out of hand as we added a lot more transforms. Uh, you might end up with, um, I don't know, a block that wasn't easy to transform into a heading because you just ended up with all these options. So these basic transforms are now always going to be at the top. Uh, just to simplify the the writing experience. So from list back to paragraph and so on. So these basics are always there. Um, this is uh, again just quality of life improvements to the way that um, the post content and so on, the templates are presented. If I, we go to single. Yeah, so these the content of these blogs post title on the content was before was just saying post content. Now it's like it actually has a few paragraphs, so you can more correctly guess what it what it's doing. Uh, the query block itself got a lot of improvements. Let me. So one one that I'm really like glad we finally got to is the um, exposing the. Let me do it actually here. Yeah. So one of these is the, so the query block is actually now registers all these variations like post list. And if you have some custom post type, it should also be available. So you can, you don't need to, like a user doesn't need to figure out what a query is, they can just uh, insert the post list and they can also uh, start from a, a, one of the patterns. Um, by the way, if we're taking notes, we should point out that the it's really underwhelming the patterns we have for query. We should have some nicer like blog patterns here. Uh, and they are all like fairly image heavy. Like it'd be nice to have some without feature images, I think. But anyways, like this is the this is all powered by the query, but it's exposed as post list, and it, it only deals with the uh, the post um, post type. So and and this is again offered for all custom post types and and developers. So if you have Woo products or portfolio items or whatever it is, you will be able to discover this. 
The same for taxonomies. I don't have anything registered here, but yeah, like uh, categories list. Uh, these are all auto-generated from a, ta a general taxonomy list. So if you have different taxonomies created, you will get access to these blocks by their name, by, by the taxonomy name as variations of the taxonomy block. Uh, more keyboard shortcuts, let's skip that. Okay. Um, yeah, and the last one I wanted to mention here on, on DevTools is the, we're opening, we're adding filters for uh, theme JSON for all of the, the stuff that theme JSON is doing. We're adding some low level filters uh, for developers so that you can essentially interact with the theme level of stuff, with the block level of stuff and with the user level of stuff. Like it's uh, because the, how how we end up computing this is uh, what the theme what WordPress says it should be what the theme says it should be what the block says it should be and what the user there are many layers to this all of these uh, should have hooks now so that you can um, again a plugin can register its own set of the full theme JSON properties through this um, which is going to be pretty fun. Uh, I think some interest I'm curious if people are going to be uh, extending it to support. Um, I don't know, different like either Tailwind or Bootstrap or whatever, like there's there's probably some opportunities there for people to hook up at this low level and try to figure out the, um, again, if they have a design system from somewhere else and they want to hook it in, um, that you can do some of that stuff. Um, I think that's about it from me. So we should have, uh, more time for questions. I'll, I'll leave everything open so if, like maybe we can answer some questions by showing stuff. We can do that. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'll stop sharing. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Matthias. That was a great walkthrough. Um, so let's uh, just kind of move it along. Uh, to uh, our each uh, individual panelist, um, I'm just gonna go go down the list. Uh, uh, David, uh, can you tell us about uh, you know what your role is and uh, you know some about things you've been working on on this release? Sure. So for core, we've mainly been focused on uh, bugs bug fixes uh, from. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of caching improvements that were made in 6.0 uh, that have been uh, there. There were a couple of bugs found, and and so just kind of improving on that as we've as we've gotten more feedback and more testing on, on different environments and such. So we've gotten a good handle on fixing some of these caching bugs that remain uh, on the core side. Uh, there, a lot of the features are still a little bit in limbo. Um, uh, some are probably going to be punted, but we, we do have a few that are going in. One in particular uh, for developers, we have a, uh, a big, uh, big ticket that I actually forgot that I had committed with for uh, 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 escaping identifiers and MySQL queries which was a, a big uh, developers probably know you, you had to write all sorts of ignores or disables around any sort of WPDB queries because you're hard coding your table names in there or throwing them into a variable that weren't being escaped by prepare. So now we have support in there for that. We don't yet, we haven't converted the rest of core to actually use it yet. We'd like to see it in the wild and see if we get any feedback, to if it can be, actually, the actual implementation can be improved. So hopefully we can actually get core converted over in uh, 6.2 maybe, and then set an example for everybody else going forward and to how, you know, safer ways to run uh, DB query with DB prepare. Um, but I think uh, other than that, WebP, as everybody knows, has is, is been, uh, Kind of scaled back for now, um, and I think uh, really focus on making it really a really really good feature for for the public to pick up once it becomes available uh, as a uh, what's seemingly been called a, a canonical plugin for now. Um, 
but yeah, other than that, it's it's just a bunch of bunch of bunch of bug fixes. So some of them are really old, some of them are, are newer uh, from some of the bundled themes from recently. But but yeah, we're we're still moving forward. Uh, great. Um, and y'all uh, definitely ask questions uh, about anything of our, our our panelists are talking about uh, in the Q and A, and we'll get to them. Um, Jeff, do you want to kind of take off from there now? Sure. Yeah. Um, and as background, I'm director of open source at Tenup. Um, thanks to them for the time to be able to contribute and participate here. Um, I've been part of other release squads in the past. Um, different in my role to David's and, and Mike's as the other core tech lead and not being a, a committer. Um, I have to lean a bit more on um, some of the other skills out there. Uh, as, as David mentioned, kind of heavy focus had been on some of the back channels and supporting efforts on WebP. And now that that's shifting to a canonical plugin, trying to uh, help with that um, as it may relate to 6.1, um, a bit too early uh, to really fully tell on that there. Um, some of the other things that have landed in that um, end users will, will see are some new O-Embed partners with Pocket Cast and Google Data Studio. Uh, and then some of the areas that I tend to focus in on um, focus-wise is internationalization, privacy, accessibility, um, right to left and, and mobile um, items and trying to find new contributors to help um, craft patches, PRs, you know, testing, writing copy, et cetera there. Uh, just trying to help pull more people into the uh, contribution funnel. So um, that's been more of, of my focus is kind of the back channel coordination as aspects. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, that's great info. Um, and I'm going to kick it over to Nick. Uh, tell us about, you know, your, your role in the release and yeah, great. Some, some awesome things you're working on. So I am uh, the editor triage lead for 6.1. Uh, this is a relatively new position on the team. We started it in 6.0 and now again in 6.1. The goal here is to kind of triage all the um, PRs and especially the bugs as we move, as we get past our initial uh, release candidates and betas and all that sort of stuff. So we're starting to consolidate all the all the things that need to get tightened up um, before 6.1 goes out the door, taking notes on, on our, on our walkthrough today on a few things. Um, but the thing that I'm honestly most excited about and I've dedicated most of my personal time to, Matias mentioned this, is that's consistency. Uh, you know, throughout the block editor and the site editor, you know, we have things like introduction of font family, you know, the, the ability to change the font type on different blocks. And any theme developer who's working with blo with blocks can, is probably, <laughs> this resonates with you, is that you could change font family and maybe headings, but not paragraphs. Um, we use paragraphs everywhere. And so now you can, the 6.1. And that same functionality is across all sorts of blocks. So there's been a huge effort, especially like in the last month to really standardize things. And I could, it seems really small, uh, but it's going to have a huge impact on adoption of kind of all this new stuff. We'll say editing uh, more block heavy themes. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be more excited if you if you've been waiting to jump on board. Uh, 6.1 is the time to do so. Uh, we have a lot more consistency and it's 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 really exciting. Yeah, I'll say uh, the consistency, like just adding a font family to a paragraph is like uh, one of my favorite like just small features it is small but it's it's a big thing for you know theme authors um so thanks for the work you've been doing there and and everybody yeah. um, and it, it it really shines through on the style variations as well because otherwise a lot of that wouldn't be really be possible so like that consistency really unlocks the the ability to put together these things and actually affect everything and have the user be able to manipulate them as well. All of those things at, at once requires that. Yeah, it makes it a delightful experience. Like, you know. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on over to Rich. Hey everyone, I'm Rich Tabor, a design lead for 6.1. I would say um, I'm probably most uh, excited about the style variations included in 2023. Like Matias said, uh, they were community submitted. I think we went uh, from 38 submitted 
designs, uh, either in Figma or in JSON, uh, down to nine or 10, which is pretty cool. I think that just having that sort of interest from design, the design community around WordPress is uh, really inspiring and it kind of it helps us look forward to the tools that we should build to help and further empower that sort of innovative, innovative front in WordPress. Um, along the design tooling front, I'm also very keen on the tools that uh, really level up the capacity to design. So like the margin and padding controls that use the scaled, scale, scaled uh, design systems. So you can create a design system that scales out within Vima JSON, just a few entries, and uh, and then use that to have consistent spacing throughout your site with uh, with all those values. Fluid typography also brings um, you know auto responsiveness to text. So based on your viewport uh, is really something very interesting, especially with uh, some of the themes, like even older themes that supported big text right out of the box, like twenty twenty one. Uh, being able to have something like that, like a design that looks cool on desktop, also scaled down without you having to really think about it. Um, and then also the locking patterns of functionality is also very intriguing. It, it creates, you know, like Matias also mentioned, it creates like basically mini blocks uh, with that you can manipulate uh, without having to rebuild blocks. Uh, so kind of taking that atomic uh, component based system and, and making it much more uh, intuitive and approachable for the editing experience and you know driving towards you know being intuitive and approachable is something we should continue to, to push forward but 6.1 definitely uh, shoots for those and that's a really good thing yeah sorry but i i didn't i didn't get to to show that part but one thing that is really exciting and connected to that is the the ability to use template parts on classic themes um and i think uh i think like there's some articles being written on on that documentation, but it'd be really cool to see. I don't know. I imagine I was thinking about the the Kubrick theme, the original Kubrick theme that had this special place where you went to like modify the header and gradients and so on. And now you can sort of designate any page on the, any part of the site in a classic PHP theme and just have a built-in interface in the editor where you're just manipulating blocks there. And if you combine that with a locked pattern things uh, you can essentially have like build really quickly without touching code like a really rich but really locked down experience uh, but then you can just reference in a php call somewhere in your php templates um, so the combination of all of those things again it was a uh, as like the the sum of um well not that small i think each one of these took some effort but uh, but all in all put together i think that's really I'm really curious what people are, are going to do that because open that opening that up to plugins. Um that really, I don't know, like if you have a plugin for you're doing, I don't know, a subscribe now thing that shows up in a model, you can say, Oh, I want to give some design access to the model. You can put it in a template part, call it there and restrict the design and just let people edit it. Um so I'm really I just wanted to mention that because I forgot to to go walk through it. Yeah, I agree. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sarah, you're up next. Hey, uh, I'm Sarah. I'm the development lead for 2023. Uh, it's also my first time being part of the release squad. It's exciting. <laughs> so I've been working with um, our design lead beer on building the most unopinionated base theme possible. <laughs> um, so it's designed to allow as much flexibility as possible for many style variations. Uh, I've really just enjoyed seeing all the designs come in from the community. Uh, it's been great seeing contributions from both developers and designers this time as well. Um, so for 6.1, um, I think I'm going to echo a lot of what you said, Rich. I'm really excited to see uh, how creative we can be with variations and how far we can push them, uh, especially with fluid typography and the spacing presets. Um, I think there's been lots of calls for responsive design and and how that's best achieved and i think both these features combined like really unlocks loads of responsive capabilities uh, and also without thinking too hard like you've just been saying i think that that uh, it, it really helps um and finally the elements api as well i think that unlocks lots of flexibility just from theme json itself yeah that was cool how many uh style variations did we end up having for 2023? We will have nine in total. And I have Mateus, so yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, we'll have 10 in total. So it's only at nine. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there'll be 10 included. Yeah, that's awesome. There's but, quite a few submitted, so. 
Yeah, we should, we should probably package like the 38 or so in some plugins so that people, because there's some pretty cool stuff there, even if it's not bundling in core. Yeah, we have had a, um, there's been a, a quick conversation about what we do next, um, which is also yeah. equally exciting actually about whether we just continue creating star variations for 2023 in a separate repo um, and, you know, just all together and then we can bounce yeah. off each other, test Gutenberg and yeah, yeah I think so, that'd yeah, be fun. We needed to get to the 5,000 themes or something, so <laughs> the style yeah, this, will this, help. This is how we do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh... All right, uh, Jonathan, did you want to uh, add some stuff today too? Yeah, if you've heard me talk before, I might be a little different sounding. I'm, I'm recovering from a, a bug from the weekend, but um, like Jeff, I'm kind of in a unique, uh, a unique role for my skill set. <clears throat> uh, so Jeff is more in the core tech position and not a as technical person. I'm the opposite. Um, I'm a core committer and I'm in a release coordinator position. Um, so I still work on things on the side and make sure I, I can help with the more nitty gritty of, uh, you know, the day to day developer work. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be helping merge the new default theme in so that everybody can get that tested in their uh, on their sites. Um, something I've been looking at a lot lately is, uh, you know, how we can slim down WordPress a little bit. Uh, so, for example, a couple of areas I've identified are uh, global terms, which is a really old multi-site feature that hasn't worked for quite a while. Um, and it's kind of disingenuous to continue including it when it doesn't work. And we don't want people to stumble upon that and have a bad experience. Um, so in this release, my plan is to actually deprecate that uh, officially. So that will be one of the things that I'm working on the next couple of weeks. Um, the link API that I mentioned is a little bit more widely used. So that will be more of a long tail deprecation where um, we're gonna, there's a, an actual official plugin for that already. So we need to actually move some of that functionality into the plugin, get everybody that's running it, which is the recommended way to use that API now um, because it's not turned on by default. Uh, to update, and then eventually we can deprecate that in core, and it would only be available in the plugin and, and kind of get that out of core itself. Um, and then I generally, day to day, I, I'm a build tool maintainer, so I work a lot on GitHub action workflows for core and making sure that tests run properly and all of those things continue to run. So um, if that interests you, take a look at those things. I'm always happy to uh, talk with anybody about that, but uh, it seems GitHub does a lot of great work there and is constantly improving that experience and trying to make sure that we're taking advantage of those new, new features and uh, changes that they're making in core and make our, our lives better as developers and contributors. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, did I get around to everybody? Uh, I think so. Um, so we're going to move on to uh, Q&A. Um, Y'all, we still have a few a uh, few minutes left in on this call, so you know any more questions y'all have, just go ahead and send them in. Um, but first, uh, let me just kind of start walking through them. Uh, anonymous attendee says they're excited in, about the functionalities and feature uh, that everybody's worked so hard at in developing. Not really a question, but just you know, thanks to everybody. Um, but let's move on. Uh, I think this will be for Matthias. Uh, could you extend on the info about block query filters? Uh, I think you just want more general information. And yeah, for sure. There's a, I can I can also drop in the walkthrough channel a few of the relevant PRs. But essentially, like there's uh, the filters. There's filters for parents. There's filters for uh, query variables and. There's a, it's just a lot of, a lot of that was just like housekeeping, like ensuring that the query loop supports a lot of the things that you're used to in WP query and so on. Um, I'll drop some of the, because it's a bit more technical than to show it. So I'll put it on the, on the channel. Assuming people are checking the walkthrough channel. Yeah. Um... Okay, uh, I, I'm not really sure uh, what this one is. Is uh, will the new theme support uh, dominant color? There is a uh, uh, Sarah. You may be able to tackle this. Uh, there's a core link in the uh, Q and A section. 
I can, uh, I can actually handle this one. Um, <clears throat> so this is related to a proposal that was made by the performance team a few months ago, a few weeks ago. Um, and essentially what it would do is when an image is uploaded, there would be some scripts that run and it determines what the dominant color in the image is. And the idea there is wow. that instead of having a blank space on the page, that dominant color would be displayed until that image is able to load. And whether that's because it's being loaded lazily uh, below the fold or uh, a, a slow network or whatever that may be. Um, to my knowledge, a final decision has not been made to actually include this in 6.1. Um, so I don't think that we should assume that the new default theme should support it just yet. Um, but we, I, I like to think that the bundle theme contributors do a very good job of making sure that new features are supported retroactively as best as possible in all the default themes that are supported. Um, so uh, I, I can say confidently that I think that that's one that if it does land in core, we'll go back and we'll make sure that all the default themes can support that properly. Um, that said, it's not going to work out of the box, I don't think, for pre-existing images. So this would still be one that would be progressively, a progressive enhancement that unless someone takes steps to support older images with that feature, um, it would only be for newer images. So um, yeah, I think that that's when that one stands. It's not a bad proposal, it just needs a little bit more discussion. And, and of course, a final decision before we can speak a little more definitively on that. Okay, yeah. Um... I was just kind of waiting to see if we had any other questions uh, coming through. It doesn't look like it. Anybody else want to add anything before we close things out? There were a couple of ones that came in that I answered um, while we were chatting. Um, I think it'd be good to just mention them out loud. Someone had asked about any updates for the web fonts API. Um, so this was merged in 6.0 with the plans of <clears throat> um, reworking some parts of it and iterating on it. When it was initially introduced, it was done in a way that um, it protected itself from being used in certain ways so that we could control how it was used in the ecosystem. So as we made these improvements, we didn't have to worry about certain aspects of backwards compatibility because we had a certain level of confidence that they, they weren't being used in certain ways. Um, there's no adjustments being planned right now in 6.1 because that's, there's a team that's actively re-architecting certain parts of it. Um, there are some parts behind the scenes in WordPress that already existed that this API should be able to reuse and, and will result in some performance up improvements and um, you know just less code be doing the same thing in multiple locations. Um, and so because of that, being a, a big over undertaking, uh, it's just taking a little bit longer. So look for that in 6.2, but it's not something that we're anticipating will be ready in 6.1. Um, and then finally, uh, another question was about WebP. And um, if you were on the make blog this weekend, you would have seen that there were a couple of posts from Matt suggesting um, that some features be explored more in, in a canonical plugin. Um, so Core in the past has followed this approach called the feature plugin approach, where something that we wanted to add to core would be built in a plugin first, tested and, and iterated on there before a decision was made if it was ready to be in core or if it should be in core. And if it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. It could just continue to live as a plugin. We would officially uh, adopt it as a, as a core or a, a team adopted plugin. Um, and so um, the suggestion was made that WebP while we scale back this for this release, maybe it should belong in its own plugin instead of the performance lab plugin. <clears throat> um, so someone had asked how people would find that if, if that was the path that the performance team chose. Um, and I shared a few suggestions that I have. Um, there's a beta tab that is on the plugin install screen when you are running WordPress under certain conditions. Um, and we have the ability to pin certain pl uh, plugins on that screen. Uh, for example, Gutenberg comes up there, I believe. Um, the design experiments plugin, the performance labs plugin also shows up there now. So we could also, we could pin it there. Uh, but I also think that there's opportunities to reach out to the groups in the community and ask them to help us install, um, in, install the plugin for groups of users to help us get some feedback on that. Um, but I also want to explore better ways to collect this feedback because unless the people that install this plugin come to Slack or open GitHub issues, there's no real ways to collect this feedback as far as what they're experiencing. Um, and so I, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about a more central way to 
uh, gather feedback for these adopted uh, plugins that we have, these, these officially recognized plugins um, to, to better iterate and improve these, these feature plugins to, uh, you know, make them succeed more and potentially increase their opportunity to be merged into core for everybody. So, uh, yeah, so we had a couple more questions come through there. Uh, I don't know if they're specific enough. Um, for the query loop, will we ever add a way to query multiple posts? Um, I don't, uh, I don't know if that means like, like by post ID or is. Yeah, because that's it. That's the, what it does is query yeah. multiple posts. So I, I would imagine maybe like by a, like specific posts. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, like uh, they're saying, okay, they, they updated. So, uh, they're asking if we can, uh, we'll be able to query, uh, multiple post types at once. Um, okay. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that that's also part of the filters infrastructure is being able to move to something that's where you can compose all of these things together a bit more. Um, I don't know where we are at right now on that, but we can follow up. And... All right. Uh, next question is, uh, since WP is unlocking the ability for end users to uh, essentially become theme creators uh, via the site editor, is there a thought on the horizon for allowing patterns to be created and saved uh, with a theme export from an end user, end user experience? Anyone want to jump on that one? Um, I can cover it otherwise. It's a, I think it is really where things are going. Like the, even, even right now, it would be, would be great if we allow people, there's this create block theme plugin that allows you, and a lot of people in the community have been building similar things where you can sort of create a theme and then release it and publish it. The same should be true for patterns, like the, the way that you should be able to create a pattern and publish it from your site to the, uh, to the directory. Um, you should be able to create a style variation and submit it from your site. I think all of that really opens up like the, the creator sort of community to really contribute, lower the barrier to contributing a lot more. Um, we'll probably be doing that through plugins, again, canonical plugins at first initially, because uh, I think that that would allow us to move faster and experiment a bit faster. Um, but yeah, I think all, all of this is... Uh, we should be allowing the software to empower people to to contribute to the whole community through it. I think that's really where where things should be going more. Yeah. Uh, the uh, following uh, the other question is: Are there any improvements for the, the UI in the admin panel? I just kind of still kind of vague. I don't know if that's just general WordPress uh, admin, uh, you know, admin or what. If it's the general administration, um, there's a, there's one post on the, I think on the design, uh, make core design too, that is sort of like showing a few paths of general improvements to the admin interface. If it's like smaller contain, like in the, in the editor, for example, the, the post uh, settings and panels have been improved in this release. Um, a lot of the component system have been improved and many plugins are using these components, so their own admin interfaces should be improving. Uh, so there's a lot of ongoing work in like those smaller details, but for general, like WP admin and improvements, like probably check out that post. Uh, we can add it somewhere. Yeah, we can add that in the uh, show notes. All right, uh, that looks like we're, we've covered all the questions uh, and we got about a minute left uh, on our time. Uh, so I just want to, uh, first I want to thank like, you know, all our panelists, uh, Matthias for, you know, screen sharing, you know, all, all the stuff, uh, that's coming up and, uh, this, uh, we will have a, a post with the, uh, the video and transcript and the details of this call, uh, on the make or website in a few days. Um, uh, 6.1 beta release, uh, sep September 20th. So that's just what, a week away now. Uh, so excited about that. Um, other than that, uh, everybody have a great week and thanks for joining us.
Thank you. You celebrate. Don't eat too much candy on Halloween because November first is our uh, release day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> David's got to take care, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Okay. Here's all.